Welcome to Organize With Me, Before and After. Let's dive into this garage project. This took 18 hours total. Most storage spaces like attics, basements, garages usually take about 12 to 24 hours. So this garage we did in a span of three different days. We're going to go ahead and follow my four-step organizing process, which is to purge, sort, contain, and maintain. If you want to learn more about my four-step process, you can buy my book, How to Organize Everything. Check out the link in the description. So as I mentioned, the first step in any organizing project is to purge, and that's to remove what doesn't belong, whether it's trash, recycle, donate, give away, or simply even relocate to a space that makes more sense. The next step is to sort. You find common items that live together that make sense to you in your head. One of the ways I like to sort is my viral video series called Cousins and Coworkers and Family. If you sort items by family members, that means they're exactly the same when asking, what is it? And then if you sort by coworkers, it's what does it work with and where it works. And lastly, cousins. Cousins is something similar in function, but not exactly the same. So as you see, we are purging and sorting. And later down the line, once we've purged and sorted, we will then contain, which is picking where the item will live and containing it into a bin, a drawer, a shelf, etc. And lastly, we will talk about maintain, which is how to maintain and keep that space by creating new habits and figuring out how it got that way and how you can maintain it and keep it organized. So if you notice these blue tubs down on the floor there are my organizing and sorting tubs that I will bring to most client appointments. It's a great way to tote things around. Those are the Roughneck Rubbermaid totes. You can find a set of those totes on my Amazon influencer shop. See the description below. So for this specific project, we are not trying to sort or detail too much because we are interested in getting this cabinet system installed sooner than later and we can worry about organizing and details once that is done. One of the challenges that I see with garage projects are the side projects or also known as side quests that come out of it. Things such as active projects, stuff that really doesn't get put away because it needs to be installed or fixed. Also, toxic recycling products that need to be disposed of properly and have to be taken somewhere. And then anything that just needs to be donated or even large trash items. So those are things after these projects that end up needing to be handled. And here goes the wind. Oh, it's about to blow over. Good catch. And now it's starting to rain. So we threw some tarps over everything we could. And that's pretty windy for Pennsylvania. Okay, we gave everything a nice sweep. And it's time to start unloading these cabinets. This set of cabinets is from a company called New Age Products. The series is a 10-piece set called Pro 3.0. The client picked it because it's heavy duty and can hold a lot of weight. I had never installed any type of cabinets like this, and I was actually really impressed with the quality. Uh, even the way they thought through their packaging, they protected their cabinets really well. Everything was really easy to install. One of the challenges was, ooh, it's heavy. Couldn't quite get the lift here. And nope. So we had to think safety and we got out a dolly to help make things a little bit easier there we go so the feet are adjustable of course kind of like a washer and dryer and it took a little bit of time for each cabinet getting it level with the next few cabinets that you're seeing we did have to install the feet which was just with some basic tools and really easy to do i would say each cabinet from unpacking to setting up and getting level took 30 to 45 minutes and once we got the first one done we got the hang of it so these upright cabinets were pretty easy. It did come with three wall cabinets that need to be installed in the wall. And it did quite work out uh, as nice as we had expected it to. So those three cabinets are going to be installed in another day. But total install time for everything that you're going to see was probably about four to five hours total with a two-person team. 
What I thought the cool part about these cabinets were is other than the hanging cabinets, the configuration can kind of be however your garage is laid out. So you can kind of pick and choose where you want them to go. Um, the client had already measured and figured out how they wanted them aligned. And for the most part, they were pretty perfect. And what's neat is they give you options. If you want some type of locker or wardrobe, you can install hooks and a rod to hang clothes. So now we've got the two taller cabinets up. There is one more tall one that's going to go in after the window there to the left. We're going to bring in three smaller drawer units that are going to be for small tools and work like a tool bench. Also on top of it, it's going to be installed is a really nice stainless steel top. One of the things about being a professional organizer that I love is it's always a new day, a new client, a new project figuring out how to meet that client's needs, how to communicate best and find out how their brain works. But not only that, working with stuff, new types of stuff. And ultimately, I think I just like things and I love to learn. This client had a lot of really great things to teach and a lot of cool tools to learn about. And one of the perks of being a professional organizer is a client is usually more than happy to pass along things that they don't want and see it go to a good home rather than just a general donate or seeing it wind up in the trash. So I did come out of this project with some nice new tools as I just started my tool collection within the last few years. And we're on to the last tall cabinet. I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup while my client preps for the next one. The rain has subsided, luckily, and we are down to the last cabinet. I really love how they nested all the small cabinets and parts and shelves within the tall cabinets. So it was ultimately three pallets that they dropped off in the driveway. Here we are starting to secure the cabinets together. There are holes and notches on each side of each cabinet in order to secure them with some nuts and some bolts. We ended up having to refigure some of the wiring on the wall. You can see to the left of the window there. So we had to remove that in order to squeeze this tall cabinet in. All we gotta do is put the feet on, turn it up and put it in and we're pretty much done for the day other than the countertop. Well, I've been going on for about seven minutes now. So I'm gonna give you a little audio break. Do, do, do remove the board from the wall with a crowbar. Turn the cabinet up, but don't hit the garage door. Take out the level, adjust the feet. Do 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 do. Time for the countertop workbench. Stainless steel, beautiful piece. However wrapped in sticky protective film. Woo, what a pain. This is a time lapse. I wonder how long it took. Finally, I got the idea to slice down the side of it with a knife and that helped it peel a little bit better, but pull it, pull it, pull it, rip it, rip it, pull it, pull it, and it's off. That really brought everything together and that looks really nice. All we gotta do is secure it from underneath to the cabinets and we're set. Now there's still shelves at the back of the garage there at the end wall. Those will be installed with some shelf clips tomorrow once we start putting everything back in. Now we had to pull drawers out in order to secure the countertop to the cabinets. Here is the first shot of the garage from far away. This is the next morning. The sun is shining. It's a cool fall day in Pennsylvania. Nothing got too wet from the rain. We've got our pile sorted, even though it looks a little chaotic. It's time to start sorting and categorizing. So some of the piles you see there are for storage. Uh, they're gonna go to a storage unit and some things still need to be purged. So we're gonna get to that in a little bit. We are gonna start installing the shelves. The shelf clips were really, really easy. They're adjustable shelves. The track runs all the way from top to bottom. We started at the top and worked our way down. I worked retail for a really long time and that is something that they taught us to start at the top and work your way down. I'm not sure why. Luckily, he already had these bins that you see sorted into categories. Uh, I did do some labeling with my label maker, but that was a little bit 
mm, too detailed for the size of this project. So uh, I feel like garages, you could go so detailed with all the screws and the hooks, especially if you're a do-it-yourselfer. There are so many little items, uh, but we didn't end up going that detailed. You'll see tomorrow or the next day that we work to finish the details that we did dive in to uh, some sorting little stuff. Anyway, so those categories there, I'll show those later as to what was in those containers and those bins, but luckily they were kind of already ready to go. So that was the easiest. So how do you know where stuff should live? I talk about real estate. So this client is tall. For anything that's high priority, you want things within reach, not too low, not too high. So when putting things away, we wanna make sure that everything that he uses often is within easy reach, one to two steps away, especially if it's something small, you're in the middle of a project and you want to go grab something real quick, one to two steps away is very ideal. Now also you think, where do I know how to put things? You want to use the most common things within reach, but also if it's obvious and you know where it goes, start there. We knew in that very first tall cabinet that those bins were going to go all in there and fit really well. So that was very easy. He knew that he wanted to put all his chemicals and cleaning products, etc., in this wall cabinet that had already been there too. So we started with the easy stuff first and that's what we did. So I started filling the tops of the cabinets, which was nice space to utilize with some tarps. We're going to eventually containerize them. But for right now, we are mostly purging, sorting, and containing now. We are figuring out where the things should live, how they should be contained, whether it's in a shelf, a bin, a cabinet, uh, or sitting out in the open. The next step, I wanted to sort out in the driveway lots of the small screws and oh, why don't I just go ahead and cut this with my knife and then ooh, slice my finger. I cut through the nail. Look at me. Good job, Kristen. Well, don't react. Don't react. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just bleeding. I'm just going to walk to my car and get a Band-Aid. Show no fear. You're going to be fine. Okay, I'm fine. Back at it. A Band-Aid, some electrical tape. I'm into it. So these little blue bins that you're seeing are going to be installed into the new cabinet system. They are great for tossing little nails and doodads and little things. So we need to start sorting those out. The Home Depot boxes that you're seeing are from the client's last move. They downsized from a larger home into this home here and had been remodeling and working on everything else but the garage. So finally it came time to invest time, energy, and money into this project. I am unpacking boxes of nails, screws, etc. We're going to go ahead and sort those categories as best as possible. And while I'm doing that, he's going to purge some of the other boxes. Purging lots of little things can be somewhat challenging. I recommend sorting into bins. Now, I've got tubs and bins of different sizes at my feet. Um, and I've got the small ones to sort into once I'm ready. But it's easy to get really detailed and spread yourself a little thin. So what I did was I sharded, I sharded. <laughs> did I really just say that? Okay, maybe nobody noticed. I'll just keep going. So it's easy to keep getting really detailed when you have all these little things. So I try to start with the biggest categories, which was just screws and nails. And the table to the right, you can just barely see the corner. Anything else? sat on that table and we are going to address that later today or on the next appointment. So to the right are a pile of nails and in the middle is a pile of screws. We've got lots and lots of miscellaneous things and as I was saying earlier, where do I start? How do I know where stuff should live? Start with the large categories, the things you use the most, and put them in the places that you can access the easiest. Towards the end of the project, you'll wind up with miscellaneous, oddball, weird shaped stuff. And then you can figure out the puzzle from there. So here we are on to the next, the second cabinet, along with filling up some of the drawers. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and let my client fill them however he sees he needs to. And I'm gonna work on filling some of the other things around. A little some of the bigger things that he can make decisions on easier and that I can execute while he does some of the smaller stuff. Cause let's face it, smaller stuff just takes up time. So I am also adding some more shelves again to the cabinets with clips. 
Uh, and here I am putting in a rag bin. They actually think they meant that little drawer to be a trash bin, but we decided that we would put rags in it instead. You'll see a close up of that later. I'll do a scan when I do an after shot. So right now I'm just staging some rags. Again, we're gonna containerize some of that stuff up top. I had mentioned also earlier that there were three wall cabinets that needed to be installed. They were going to run over top of that stainless steel counter, uh, but are no longer going to do that as we're going to utilize that pegboard up on the wall and keep access to the window open. So the uh, three extra shelves are gonna have to sit on the floor. They were over to the right there. Um, and they're just gonna have to stay there until he gets an opportunity to install those on the other side of the garage. I wanna talk about knowing what containers to buy. Now, as an organizer, I see a very common container size. I'm talking about the clear plastic bins mostly. That's the most common container that I will recommend or that most clients have. You can see through them. And some people like the latches. Sometimes the latches are cheap and they fall off. But if you find ones with good latches, they can be really helpful. So anyway, if you don't know what containers to buy, go ahead and just stage items where you would want them to live. So you see the rags up on the top above, above our heads next to those tarps. We just staged those there thinking, you know what, we'll probably put those in a bin later, but let's just at least get them there. Then we can measure and figure out what bin will fit. Also, if you can just use cardboard boxes or any type of containers that you have laying around just to get everything together. So what I did was I'm used to kind of staging stuff inside this cabinet on the right hand side. You see a white tub there. That's just one of my sorting bins. And I'm just going to kind of leave that there until we see how big that pile is. Once you see the pile and you know how much you have, then you can go out and buy the correct containers. Sometimes it's just hard to anticipate what you're going to need. Uh, you can see the pegboard straight ahead with the yellow and red little tubs there. Uh, we started adding the most commonly used items. We are now on our third day here, and we are starting to detail all the little, tiny, little things. And those are all laid on that table. That was the table I was sorting in the driveway the day before that I mentioned I couldn't get too detailed. And I would, I would take too long and it would take me forever. So let me set these miscellaneous things till the end of the project. So we're kind of slowly chipping away. I'm kind of, you know, asking, you know, do you need these little things? One key thing to remember when you have an item is to ask yourself, one, will I remember I have it? And two, if it's so miscellaneous and random, are you going to remember where the heck it is? Because if it doesn't really live with anything, and it's easily replaceable, let it go. If you can replace something and you don't mind purchasing it again, you know, there's context and there's variables, I understand. But uh, little like little random screws and bolts that you, why are you really gonna find it whenever you need to use it? You can go out and buy a dollar, two dollar bolt if you need it. Anyway, going forward. So we're getting close to the end. I keep pulling out s smaller stuff. We're trying to make sense of cousins and coworkers and family, but it's really important for it to make sense to my client. Um, of course, I always love suggesting things to see if they make sense, uh, but ultimately it's up to him because he's the one that will have to function in this space. I have to say, sometimes you have these oddball items like the orange piece laying on the table there we just really just, that just kept floating around for three days. We just didn't know what to do with it because it was kind of its own thing. So what ends up happening is, you know, something like that gets stored with similar shaped items because it's long. It doesn't really sit in a drawer. It doesn't get used much. So where would it live? Maybe with other long shaped types of items. And you know what? Sometimes that just happens. You know what also too is really cool when I'm with a client and we're working on a project and we're trying to figure something out like one item or one category and it's just not making sense. I say, you know what, put a pin in that. Let's table that. It'll come back around and it'll work out towards the end. And in almost 99.9% .9 of the time, we find a solution at the very end. It just kind of comes to us. So if you're not quite sure and you're kind of trying to force something, just to just keep working on with the stuff that you know and usually it'll, a solution will pop up at the end. I really love that, I think that's awesome. So here I'm just like, I'm wishing we could dive into more detail. Uh, I would love to label every little bin and really go through all these old screws and tools and 
things like that. But um, I think just getting in into homes for now is a big step in the right direction. And I'm trying not to get too detailed. So we're re-strategizing how we can finish with our last few hours here. We're going to get close to the end here. We're going to be wrapping up shortly. Let's have another little audio break. Sorting all the little things, all the little things. Do do do. I love to sort, sort, sort. I love to sort, sort, sort. Washers and bananas. I love to sort, sort, sort. Caulk guns and screwdrivers. Oh, that table's getting empty. It's all the real weird stuff left over. I just would like to thank you for watching this video. If you're body doubling right now, some people like to play my videos while they're organizing or play while they're tidying up because it's a little motivating and it's comforting. I would like to say great job on whatever it is you're doing. The cabinets are getting pretty full. We're, uh, we're getting down to the end. There's not much space. There's a little space in the pegboard up above. We're going to fill that in with something later. I'm adding some labels. I've convinced my client that labels are very helpful. As much as I would like to label everything, I did not. But that's okay. Everything is easily findable. And sometimes it just takes time to remember where you've newly organized everything. So we've pretty much done purging and sorting. We are containing now. We are choosing bins, shelves, drawers, where things should live, where they should be contained. And then I am adding labels when necessary, if, if I think it'd be extra helpful. So the cabinet system came with dividers for the drawer sets, the ones in the middle. And we made an executive decision not to use the dividers. They can uh, create little rows or little cubes for the drawers. But with what my client had, we decided that it wouldn't be maybe the best scenario for him because it sometimes can be a little too limiting. Sometimes, you know, if you see like a really fancy organized tool system, everything's like laid out real nicely and spread out. But he's got a lot and he's a busy dude. He's got he works on a lot of stuff himself. Um, and we just decided not to. You'll see the close ups of the drawers later, but everything is laid out and visible and he knows where to find them. So, um, yeah, sometimes too puzzle like or too exact can really limit you because then if you have something you want to add, you have to completely shift everything around if there's no space. So we're going to find some solutions where to store those extra three shelves that didn't get installed. So he's just going to neatly stack them here on the side. And we didn't get a chance to really address this area. We didn't get into those cabinets. We kind of kind of ran out of time, I guess. But we've achieved our ultimate goal, which was to install those cabinets and get everything sorged, purged and sorted. Blah. Okay. Um, it's time kind of for cleanup and putting all the last things away. Now we are down to, I wish you could see the pile, but the pile outside in the garage is all the weird, bulky, odd shaped things. But we've got little spaces left. We've got spots on top of that cabinet on the back wall. We've got some space left inside the cabinet. So we're just kind of getting creative with where best to store them. Put those buckets on the back wall and we're getting real close to the end here. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Today was pouring, pouring rain. And uh, you can see the, the wet footprints all over the garage floor. It was crazy, the weather we had. But ultimately, it was nice, cool. It was a beautiful time of year to do a garage project. I feel like fall is kind of like also like a spring cleaning for the winter in a different way. At this point, we're just making use of every little available space, wall space, the pegboard, shifting things around, some extra bins we didn't end up using. But I always recommend it's nice to have extra bins. I say often, 
keep extra bins, storage bins like that, like you do for Tupperware for food. Because as an organizer, I'm always, you know, changing out bins, helping a client switch from a small bin to a large bin. And it just helps as you adapt as your space changes. Sometimes you can downsize to a smaller bin or upgrade to a bigger bin. And if you know your favorites, just keep your favorites on hand. It doesn't have to be a bunch. It doesn't have to be crazy. Just like a few of each, even just like that stack on the right. Some shoe size bins, some mediums, and some larges. We finally made use of that last little pegboard area. Oh, I love a good sweep out. That's probably one of my favorite things to do. It's very cleansing. We're about to wrap up by just kind of tidying. We're gonna clear off the surfaces and tidy up that back corner and get everything photo ready for some last minute photos and videos. And I'll give you a little close up tour here shortly. Where to put the spark plugs? We had been waiting for hours. Where are those spark plugs gonna go? I don't know. And we finally moved something and it's perfect. Right next to the car jack on the bottom shelf on the left. So my client fixes his cars a lot. And so he does his car work stuff is on the front left and front right of the garage, which I thought was really smart. Okay, there we are. Let's have a tour. We've got the workbench. Here we've got all the pre-sorted categories. We've got painting supplies, plumbing supplies, caulk. There's the workbench. Got some rope ties and masks, zip ties. Got some tools down below there. These self-closing cabinets and drawers are wonderful. Top drawer, we've got some measuring tools. We've got electric zip ties. We've got small tools and bits. We've got this miscellaneous tools and garden. And the bottom there, Mm. clips clamps and we got rags on the right and little bits on the left the most commonly used items right there on the pegboard got tarps rags snakes nails screws extra products we got tarps again this is fishing hunting and on the bottom some tile tools and some other tools and then we've got all the products here, chemicals inside, car cleaning buckets, empty gasoline cans, ladders, brooms, shovels, and the car spot. Before and after. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to support my journey and look out for more Organize With Me videos. Comment below. Let me know what you thought. And don't forget, you can check out my Amazon shop where I recommend my favorite organizing products. Happy organizing!